got a couple things to share. Remember, it's a, the rules are changing how we collaborate. It's, it's a dilemma. So let me just put dilemma into its context in, in uh, vocabulary. Dilemma means something that's hard to resolve that you can't solve. Plenty in Minnesota, we solve it. We put up dams, we pull sets, pulls it back. Your uh, basement gets flooded. You pump it out, you clean it out, you refix it. That's solvable. It's a horrible reality of what happened. It's fatiguing, it costs you money, it's energy draining. But we solve it. Seven days, we get frozen out this winter. We keep kids home, there's pressure to get kids there. It's now 73 degrees, and everybody's like, why didn't the kids go? Because our memories are short. <laughs> and people are like, don't ever do that again. But we know we put kids first, maybe for the first time in Minnesota. I don't know, I'll talk about that, I hope. But we can solve it. A dilemma you only try to manage. Adjust, try to figure out how to change the variables. So this collaboration is a dilemma. I'll, I'll throw some things at you of why I think it is. we need to start talking about this is a conversation. So, where are my colleagues? who are African American, Hispanic, Hmong, green and white, um, native, uh, attempts to, at hiring people of color and they don't see colleagues that look like them and end up leaving because that's not, they're not comfortable in that situation too. So I'd like to hear from people of color on their perspective if anyone would be willing to share that's here today. I'm going to hold that not because that's not yeah. important. Yeah. Uh, really, it is. But I want to get into this too and that should be a provocative question as we're bumping into each other. And I'm hoping that the 75 of you, I keep counting as people come in, when next year comes along, 
it's a personal invitation, right? It's saying to someone, you know what? Why don't you come with me? We're going to go into this ed camp. It's kind of wacky. It's very much free flowing. Somebody might go, good, finally, free flowing staff development. Kind of. Why don't you come with me? It'd be nice if next year there was 150 people and the question wasn't that. I mean, it's about the collaboration dilemma. Let me put it back into the conversation. I'm not talking about students collaborating here. I'm not. I'm talking about adults. There is a dilemma. And I believe the rules are changing. Part of that is our demographics are changing. They've already changed, by the way. Just like when I was with some of my colleagues here, who I had the honor to work with, um, the technology conversation that's in your hand has changed. And I'll show you some interesting stats. We know our students of color use a, a uh, mobile device more frequently, and families of color buy this device more frequently than white families. Right here. We know that because it's been researched. Used more by families of color, purchased more. So if you have a myth of, you know what, it's uh, not in people's hands, it is. So the conversation of what about technology and access, it's gone. You can't rely on that for collaboration in the sense of, I wonder, until we get everybody to have one. So I'll show you the numbers. Um, I'm just throwing out different rules. I w wasn't even anticipating the conversation about women or about my colleagues of color. It wasn't until everybody sat down and like, unless I address that, how do we address collaboration? Really, how do we address the dilemma until people are at the table? If, we, if all of us aren't at the table, I just go on with my own presentation thinking it's kind of within my sphere. So provocative. Remember, this is intelligence squared at you. I throw different things at you. You're going to decide. All right, let me jump into this. Uh, I just pulled off this off a site last night called Teach Thought. It shows the roles that you all have as teachers, all of you. Doesn't matter if you're an administrator now, you're a teacher. And as you look at that, you're going to see a very interesting thing. I believe collaboration isn't even in there. I'm always surprised that within the framework of formal education that Carol referenced, we don't have a class on how do you collaborate in the community. What would be the closest class you have ever taken in your undergraduate graduate program that would lead toward the conversation of how do you effectively collaborate? Interpersonal skills, psychology, communication, not even sociology, psychology, communication. Okay? Anybody else? Yeah. Leadership. Leadership. Give me a class um, or something that you have to uh, push. No, I don't remember if you asked this class, though. It was right at the university, I showed it with your leadership. I don't remember exactly. Teacher leadership. Teacher leadership. rule. One of those was communication, <coughs> direct and learn, purposeful thinking, effective group citizens. So interesting, but we don't teach the conversation to you of how to do soft skills. None of you are standing up going, oh yeah, I had that class, fantastic, I use it all the time. My premise is going to be if it's not here, how can we be doing collaboration? It's a dilemma to me. I did 
As one of my roles in education, I was a facilitator for school improvement for 52 schools around the metro area. For three years, I facilitated 52 schools. And the very first thing was to get a team together in the school that would learn the skill. And the very first skill was team building skills. Not the team building skills some of you have done, which is, my name's Steve, uh, I'm a squash. Okay. Right. Squash, cool. <laughs> no, the deep one. No, there's a lot of them that are phenomenal. <coughs> And I'll do square. So here's a, a uh, definition of collaboration. I kind of want to give you something to hang your hat on. So I'm going to steal a couple of you. Just if you, Danielle, would you be okay reading that definition so people can hear it? In it's that a way. working practice whereby individuals work together to a common purpose to achieve business benefit. Please feel free to go on. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Key features of collaboration tools are. <laughs> I cannot. I don't have my glasses. Oh, no, no problem. No. <laughs> Somebody pick it up for Danielle. Synchronous collaboration, such as online meetings and instant messaging, asynchronous collaboration, such as shared workspaces and annotations. Many organizations are also looking at free form collaboration tools to improve collaboration and reduce the number of emails used for collaboration. Downloaded 7.7. what I see we emphasize. Here's what my experience over the last 10 months and then over the last 10 years has been that we emphasize. We emphasize communication. Right now we're emphasizing that communication in the technology frame. I'll give you a whole bunch of stats on that. We emphasize leadership. Teacher leaders, national board for professional teaching standards, I ran that in Robinsville. Um, AP, IB, as teachers, principals, as uh, building leaders. We emphasize that. Active action plans, absolutely. We emphasize investment. Right now, I am stunned at the reinvestment that the state of Minnesota, in a sense, through its legislature, is recommitting to education. I've lived through a period of 10 years of just cutting, cutting, cutting. I was in Robinsville Area Schools for 14 years. In no year was there ever a budget that they didn't get cut. In no year. But I'm seeing an investment conversation that says we're going to put money in. Not necessarily in a 
collaborative way, but we're going to put money into it. Organization. Okay, we'll talk about that. All right, here we go. The rules are changing. This is my premise. I showed this to my wife yesterday. She's like, what does that mean? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I would love to tell you, but I think the rules and collaboration are changing. That's my premise. I don't know if this is a good thing. Number of billionaires in the world today, up from 1,426 last year, the U.S. has the most. 1,645 people are billionaires. I don't know what that means, except in my head, some of it means don't collaborate anymore. <laughs> in my head. But again, I'm going to throw one more idea, then I want you to talk to something. <coughs> Hours spent reading per week by residents of India, the most in the world. The United States ranks 23. <coughs> That's how many hours in India the residents read every week. Right. One more, just because it's fun. Well, I find this astounding. Active world users of Gmail, Google's email, which launched 10 years ago on April 1st, 2004. So 10 years ago when I wrote that collaboration piece, <coughs> Google launched Gmail. So here's the stat on how many people are active users as of 414 14 Thank you. Okay, doesn't have to follow my train of thought. Any train of thought will give you. 